How's it going guys? This is Luke from Coffee House and today we're doing an in-depth on the fellow Ode grinder as I'm sure you can imagine uh, we are doing. So you know it's in my nature as a espresso repair kind of guy to really tinker with the kind of all of this coffee equipment and the fellow Ode is really interesting to me because it shared a lot of characteristics with a grinder that I've worked with for a very long time which is the Malconig EK43. Um, similar flat burst set same kind of motor and shape style um, and yeah so for me this was really interesting to see it from a home perspective so what I plan on doing is I'm gonna kind of show you through everything we have going on here what goes where and we'll kind of work our way top to bottom and I'm just gonna tell you my thoughts about what I saw what I learned taking this apart the things that I think would might might be a little bit better and yeah so we're just gonna jump into it it's going to be, you know, a little complex at parts, but uh, overall, I just want this to be informative for somebody who might be repairing their own or um, might be, you know, just curious about the inner workings of something that they're going to pay 300 bucks for. Um, that being said, let's jump into the $1.2 million backed Kickstarter grinder, the Fellow Ode. So top to bottom, we can start with the cover base plate for the hopper here. There is a little nice little picture on there um, that tells you it's a nice little guide, just kind of what you should grind your coffee to uh, in reference to the settings on there. Under that you have a small uh, volume plastic hopper here. This plastic is actually really nice, uh, reminiscent of a lot of other similar pl plastics like um, the Barazza Forte um, plastic is really similar to this. Um, but that being said, it fits right atop there and probably holds, I would say, about 100 grams of coffee. Um, I pour, when I make a cup at home or a large pot, um, that's about 66 grams, um, which is pretty full. So you could probably jam 100 in here. Upon removing this, so there's something that I would definitely take caution in, is that there's four screws here that are all kind of like an Allen-shaped screw. Um, if you remove those, they can fall actually right into this burr set, which is gonna you know if you're not able to get the screw out you're gonna have to do something like you can see here uh, which is not always ideal so it's definitely just something to keep in mind when you're removing those screws also sitting atop there you'll see this little plastic diffuser what this does um, is protects this from getting kind of jammed up with a lot of coffee it's gonna diffuse the coffee in a good way after removing that you're gonna get the first kind of inner workings of the the motor assembly and the burr assembly um, but really you won't be able to access much. You will, however, be able to see the fully metal case that encases the motor back here and the burr set here. You can see that this was black powder coated because the inside has you know, remnants of a, a powder coating. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around really quickly so we can get a view of the back side. And upon looking at the back, very, very simple, small, kind of like what I assume to be a sensor for the for the fill because this is an auto stop grinder and all of that is covered right here by a base plate. This base plate here um, seems to look like it had cooling holes or cooling dimples here um, but upon further inspection that's not the case. You can see I actually did do one there just to kind of see how easy it was to break through. I imagine Fellow could take advantage of this in maybe a more intense cafe style grinder uh, by adding cooling like that which is cool. No pun intended. Um, with that being said, this is plastic. It would be nice to see if it was maybe a little bit higher plastic. It's a ABS 2.1 are the markings in there, but uh, it would have been nice to see something that maybe was metal. I just think, um, you know, it being back here, you're not going to touch it as much. But overall, I mean, it's just kind of nitpicking at that point. That being said, this will protect the grinder from falls and things like that if it were to fall back a little bit more. Also with the cooling, it might have been intentional with this one because having holes of that size could allow particles to get in here and you want this to be a closed system. Let's go back to the front for a little bit and we can jump into the burr set. So before we jump into the burr set actually, I'm going to talk about what you're going to see under this. So as you can see here, I've removed a pretty specific part uh, which is this part right here, this plastic which acts as kind of like a carrier for the coffee to not get into the actual unit uh, and get into the electronics or anything like that. But what you'll also see is this little piece of metal right here, which you can see it's a lot bigger on the inside. And what that does is that actually is the contact point for the static release right here that you hit to knock any kind of hung up grounds in there. 
So when it hits this piece of metal right here, it's going to give it a nice shake and push everything through. That being said, I do not want grounds to fall into the electricals, um, so I'm not going to touch that. Um, obviously, this is a big magnet um, for holding the grounds bin in place, which is very, very nice. And you can see there's a piece of metal right there to do that. Um, before we jump in, let's actually look at this a little bit more. You can see in here, um, there are two guides, two metal guides that have been attached here, um, which allows you to guide the grounds more into a narrow vessel for a pour over or something like that. Um, I think this was to accommodate the fellow uh, pour over set that they have, the X and the XF, which um, is very, very narrow, or maybe like an AeroPress or something like that. But these I've found to more than anything block up your grinds. They're a little inconvenient for me, if I'm being honest. Um, they have some markings on the inside if you go by volume, but I feel like people buying a $300 grinder are probably weighing their coffee out. Anyways, so this is where we get into the part where you can clearly see that this is a lot of reference to the EK or any other flat burr grinder in this kind of shape and style. And that's because you can see these flat burrs driven by the motor right here. This is very, very similar to the, um, to the burr set in the EK, which is, you know, it's great for me because I'm definitely used to this. Um, before we put that in, I can kind of explore all the different parts here. Um, this is the part where it allows you to control actually this right here. Uh, so what you're, this is where you're going to adjust your grind size. On the EK, for example, there is a stepless grinder adjustment. So you're able, when you turn that handle, um, adjust the grind size to as specific as you can turn that handle. However, here you can see there's a piece of metal and a spring with a detent, which clicks. So for some people, they might not like that. Some people, it might be a little bit easier to be like, okay, like the, these are the options I've been given, so I'm going to stick with those. For me, I would have liked a stepless grinder. However, I think this is much more of a option for everybody. Uh, you can see here that I've marked all of these lines with a Sharpie all the way into here as well, because you don't want to be in a position where you're gonna have to redial this in if it's already dialed in. As you can see, everything else inside of the grinder is actually pretty straightforward, but something about taking this base plate off that I learned that you will want to know is that these four detents right here are all spring loaded. And with doing that, uh, you're able to pop this plate off in a pretty easy way. That being said, um, if, you, if you don't, like that. Um, but if you don't do, if you go in here and try and unscrew these screws, uh, you're going to lose the springs for these little detents here. And it's just going to make a mess. We had to fish one out of the inside of the motor just a couple minutes ago when I was playing around with this. Um, so keep that in mind, but this is cool. Maybe there's an option for, uh, you know, you to make something like this or fellow to come out with something a little more specific if they were to make a stepless grinder or something like that. But this is cool because you're able to customize this piece and that could create some personality for the grinder. Other than that, you have the plastic piece here that sits here with the controls. Um, this is attached to the step right here, which allows you to turn that. Again, when you go to put this back in, make sure that you're lining this up with where you left it originally, make some markings so you don't mess up and put it in the wrong place. Other than that, um, it's a fairly straightforward unit overall. Um, included in that is a nice little cute brush so you can get in there and you know clean your burrs if you're out here adjusting like I am. But you can see that, you know, I would I would imagine that fellow would prefer that people who buy this grinder are actually sending it in to get new burrs or something like that rather than changing them out. However, this unit um, is actually really similar to a lot of other flat burr units so it is really easy to change it yourself um, but yeah the brushes wood handled metal just kind of a nice and straightforward little piece but that being said I think that's really about it I don't want to jump into the electronics of the motor or how everything kind of you know, how the auto stop works or anything like that I imagine the the amount of people who are going to be working on the actual electronics of the unit is probably not as many because these are warranted but that being said I hope you enjoyed looking a little bit more in depth here as to what composes this grinder and kind of how everything makes sense. That being said, I think this is an amazing grinder, especially for the home and everybody kind of agrees. I mean, with that Kickstarter backing, you can see that people really understand why this is so different than any other grinder on the market. Um, 
I think this really shifted the paradigm for coffee grinding and I'm excited to see what they come out with next. That being said, thanks for tuning in to this very in-depth uh, fellow owed review and I will see you next time.